In this module, we will see the remaining part of the matrix algebra that was covered in uh, uh, module, uh, the previous module. Here mainly we will focus on the inverse of a matrix, uh, I mean not only in general, in, I mean in inverse, but also the uh, G inverse, you know, for the singular matri square matrix. And then how to solve the linear system of equations through uh, matrix inverse then eigen value eigen vector the singular value decomposition and the use of the singular value decomposition the cholesky decomposition and the use of cholesky decomposition we have seen the basic concepts of uh, matrix and linear uh, algebra in r uh, up to multiplication that we have seen and we have seen you know, how the different derivation can be done using uh, matrix and vector uh, algebra without uh, using any loop, nested loop in R. Now we'll move to some other uh, aspects of uh, matrix algebra is the inverse of matrix which is a very important part for linear equation solving. So in general the inverse of n by n uh, for inverse in it has to be a square matrix as you know. So in general the inverse of an n by n matrix A is the, mat, uh, is the matrix of B, the another matrix B that is also n by n, n by n order which then multiplied by A gives the identity matrix I. That is if A is a matrix and B is a inverse of the matrix then A into B the matrix multiplication A into B should give you or B into A should give you the identity matrix then we will say the B is the inverse of A that is the general concept that you must have uh, learned. So let's uh, assign a matrix say A say 2 by 2 matrix 1 3 2 4 is arbitrarily I assign and number of column equals to 2 by uh, by row it will do so if, I, if you say by row then what it will do it will first assign 1 3 as the first row and 2 4 the second row if by default it is column wise so it would be if if you don't pass anything uh, or you know by row equals to false then it would be 1 3 1 column and 2 4 another column would be combined uh, so as here I mentioned by row equals to true so the matrix would be first row should 1 2 and second row should be 2 4 then to get the inverse of the matrix, you know, there is a function called solve, S-O-L-V, all are lowercase. So solve function can be used to get the matrix. Actually solve, you, you will normally you will have, you know, two arguments. It is the solve is developed for basically uh, solving the linear equations. So you can say uh, two arguments, but if you avoid the second arguments, it will generate the inverse of the matrix. The first argument should be a squared matrix. And then you, you can just write say B equals to solve A. And if you just type B, you will see the inverse of the matrix. And just to check whether B is the matrix of uh, inverse of A or not, you can write A multiplied by B, matrix multiplied by B, then you will see that it is actually a identity matrix. Solving system of equations, I mean linear equations, uh, is is very easy when you know this vector and matrix concept, because you know the linear equations can uh, when you solve the linear equations definitely you need the matrix algebra. Say suppose uh, or otherwise you know you have to do one by one manually by replacement method that is too so tedious. So say mx equals to z is a linear equation. Uh, so x we, we have to solve x say. So m is a matrix and x is a vector. Uh, similarly the, we, we have to get the solution of that vector and z are the vector. Uh, x and z are the vectors and the solution of x should be m inverse z. You know m definitely inverse should exist that means determinant of m should not be uh, 0. For illustration say assign one vec uh, matrix A is uh, in number of I mean 2 by 2 matrix C1, 2, 3, 4 and N column equals to true and B say the C equals to 7 and 10 so B should be 2 by 1 order vector so 7 then if you want to solve the X 
what you can do the solve a then vector mul matrix multiplication into uh, that is b so that will give you the solution of x that is here 1 and 2 alternatively as i mentioned you can pass the a and b together into the solve function the solve is uh, i mean in, within solve you just first should be the matrix a and second should be the b if you pass separated by comma it also give you the solution you don't need the um, the multiplication that i have shown earlier steps so it itself solve the uh, x Now we will see how we will get the generalized inverse. As you know, where the square matrix, I mean the square matrix is singular, you cannot calculate the inverse. There you can opt for a G inverse. Uh, not all square matrix have an inverse, as I mentioned, only those of a full rank. However, all matrices have an infinite number of generalized inverse. A generalized inverse of a matrix A is a matrix. Uh, AG inverse satisfying this property that is A into AG inverse into A should be A that is the concept if AG inverse is a, a G inverse of A then A AG inverse into A should give you A so now I am taking a help of the library of mass and then assign a matrix 2 by 3 order matrix using the R bind command say C R bind C1, 3, 2 and C2, 8, 9 then it will generate a matrix of A and if you pass this assign uh, matrix within a bracket it will automatically display you don't need to see to display the matrix you don't need to type again A uh, this is the concept and the generalized inverse of A just G I N V so is a function from mass you will get that mass package you will get so G I N V is a G inverse if you just pass the matrix a singular matrix within G inverse uh, function G in it will give you the G inverse let's check whether uh, it is the G inverse of A or not so let's pass multiply A by the G inverse of A and then uh, multiply G inverse by a and then finally a multiplied by g inverse multiplied by a and see whether it is giving the same matrix or not yes you know after multiplication we can see it is the same a matrix that we assign so definitely g in a that is the new matrix that it has generated is the actual g inverse of the singular matrix a the uh, 2 by 3 order matrix singular matrix now you know another uh, aspects that you can uh, derive from uh, the matrix algebra is the uh, eigenvalue and eigenvector which is very very important in many aspects you know especially for the principal component analysis the factor analysis uh, sections you know that eigenvalue and eigenvector is a very important concept uh, to solve the uh, I mean to get the solution uh, the, uh, in linear algebra an eigenvector or a characteristic vector of a square matrix is a vector that does not change its direction under associated linear transformation. In other words, if V is a vector that is non-zero, then it is an eigenvector of a square matrix A if AV is a scalar multiple of V. The conditions could be written as the equation AV equals to lambda V where lambda is a scalar known as the eigenvalue or characteristic value associated with eigenvector of V. I just tried to remind, uh, just recall the eigenvalue and eigenvector concept you must have learned long before. Say here I am assigning uh, a new matrix say A, uh, 3 by 3 square matrix. Say just arbitrarily I just took the sequence 1 to 9 and then split it into 3 rows and 3 columns. So that A is a matrix of uh, 3 by 3 uh, of order 3 by 3 and then eigen is one function if you pass the square matrix within the eigen function E i g in all lower case then it will give you the value and vector the 
this is the eigen the first one would be the eigen value and the second one uh, will give you the eigen vectors so the square root of a matrix by diagonalization suppose uh, n by n matrix a is you know, diagonalizable if there is a matrix b and a diagonal matrix d such that a equals to v d v inverse this happens if and only if a has n eigen vectors which constitute a basis for c to the power n in this case v can be chosen to be the matrix with n eigen vectors as columns and thus a square root of a is r v s v inverse where s is any square root of d as d is the diagonal elements just take the reciprocal of the diagonal elements will give you the uh, i mean sorry uh, just get the square root of the diagonal element will give you the square root of uh, d uh, suppose you know d is uh, one matrix uh, is a uh, three diagonal i mean uh, two suppose uh, we assign a matrix d uh, of uh, three by three order then eigen eigen um, eigen value and eigen vector can be generated by eigen uh, within bracket d if you pass then say eg then eg vector into square root of diagonal of uh, eg values that is the eigen values three by three it will give you a three by three diagonal uh, matrix and then transpose of eigen vectors and if, if, if you are confused you can just display one part uh, separately suppose first you see what eg dollar vectors giving second you see where the diagonal of eg dollar vectors 3 by 3 gives and what the square root of that gives and then you know you can multiply that might give you the clear picture what actually i did here you know that by splitting up the steps for this calculation but this is very important the square root of a matrix sometimes is uh, required for uh, different uh, i mean computation uh, for a simulations and you know statistical estimation techniques next we'll see the singular value decompositions uh, let a b and m by n uh, matrix then we can write a equals to u sigma v inverse while u is an m by m orthogonal matrix v is an n by n orthogonal matrix and sigma is m by n matrix whose first r diagonal elements are non zero singular values like sigma 1 sigma 2 dot dot sigma r of a and all other entries are zero the columns of v are called the right singular vectors and the columns of u are called the left singular vectors see a equals to matrix 1 to 12 4 and 3 then this is a 4 by 3 matrix for singular value decomposition there is a function called svd if you pass the matrix a within svd it will give you the uh, it will give you the u v and uh, sigma matrix as uh, the say uh, it will give you d and then u then v so d as is the diagonal elements only so you can form the diagonal matrix and u is u and v uh, u is the i mean left uh, uh, i mean uh, singular um, uh, decomposition value and the uh, v uh, is the right singular uh, vectors that you have in matrix so d u and v would be generated by a s v d function we can use this uh, singular value decomposition to get the pseudo inverse uh, of a matrix uh, so now the next illustration would be how to derive a pseudo inverse by singular value decomposition the singular value decomposition can be used for computing the pseudo inverse of a matrix indeed the pseudo inverse of a matrix m with singular value decomposition m equals to u sigma v inverse is the m the plus is a 
zero inverse is equals to u then sigma plus zero uh, and u inverse. So where sigma in plus is the zero inverse of sigma, which is formed by replacing either the non-zero diagonal entry by its reciprocal and transposing the results into the matrix. So that means it's as a sigma is a diagonal matrix, so pseudo inverse would be just take the reciprocal of all the diagonal elements uh, and that you will get the sigma plus. So that easily, I mean by this equation easily you can get the pseudo inverse of m that is m plus. So let's see how you can get in R. Suppose m equals to matri is a matrix of you know 1 comma minus 2 4 0 0 6 0 0 1 uh, 3 then uh, you can see the determination of this matrix is you know actually 0 so this uh, 3 by 3 matrix uh, I mean determination is 0 so you cannot get that normal inverse of the matrix as determination is 0 so it's a singular matrix to get the pseudo inverse we will first uh, use the singular value decomposition function to get the singular value decomposed because you need u, v, and sigma. So let d is the diagonal of S D V and dollar d and three by three matrix, where S D V dollar v then multiplied by a d and then multiplied by transpose of S D V dollar u, and that will give you the uh, pseudo inverse of uh, m matrix here m matrix so uh, next we'll see you know how to get the lower and upper triangular part of a matrix in r suppose m2 is a matrix of uh, 4 by 5 order and if you just pass that m2 matrix within the function lower dot try if you pass then it will you will give a, a binary matrix where you'll have true and false, true and false. Wherever true, you know, you can easily convert as one and wherever false, you can easily convert as zero. But by default, you know, op diagonal, I mean, if you want to uh, include the op diagonal, uh, the diagonal elements, you should specify. And then easily you can get it. Suppose, you know, M2, the lower dot try uh, within uh, bracket M2, wherever ES, I mean true you put not available then if you put not available automatically the lower triangle would be not available upper triangle would be retained and that would give you the uh, upper triangular matrix similarly you will get the lower triangular matrix you know instead of upper triangle you can uh, set uh, I mean uh, the um, instead of setting not, not available in the lower triangle you can set the not available the upper triangle it will give you the upper triangular matrix and if you want to the diagonal elements off then you can just say diagonal equals to, zero, to true and then the diagonal would be included as true and you assign not available they are true for not available so assign not available automatically the diagonal would be eliminated only the upper triangle would be displayed the last topic that i am going to cover here is the cholesky decomposition uh, the cholesky decomposition of a hermitian positive definite matrix a is a decomposition of the form a equals to l l prime i mean l star here say where l is a lower triangular matrix uh, with real and positive diagonal entries and l star l prime denotes the conjugate transpose of l see a is a, again i'm assigning a 3 by 3 matrix for the demonstration uh, by the matrix function and the cholesky for, for cholesky decomposition you just use the function chol chol uh, that if you just pass the matrix within the chol function it will give you the cholesky decomposition or that means it will give you the l and uh, and, uh, and you can get easily you can get the conjugate transpose say for uh, solving linear system of equation by cholesky decompositions the application of cholesky decomposition the cholesky decomposition is mainly used for numerical solutions of linear equations say x equals to b 
if a is a symmetric and positive definite then we can solve a x equals to b by first computing the Cholesky decomposition a equals to l l star then solve l y equals to b for y by forward substitution and finally solve l star x equals to that is the conjugate transpose l star x equals to y for x by you know back substitution so for illustration let a equals to a 3 by 3 order matrix and b is 3 by 1 order vector arbitrarily i assign here and then uh, say assign all the elements in a matrix a of 3 by 3 order and then b as uh, another vector c5 21 and 15 and then we'll get l as the transpose of um, Cholesky decomposition a uh, that is the l uh, is the t of chol a and that would be the l and then l prime would be the l star so first we'll see y equals to c we had not assign, assign one uh, array and then y1 equals to b1 by diagonal of l1 the first element the element of the diagonal uh, value and then y2 is in this equation that you can solve it and y3 equals to b3 minus l3 1 into y1 minus l3 2 into y2 divided by diagonal L3 then it will give you the Y so we will get the Y so next we will say U equals to T of a transpose of L and now to get Y we can easily you know uh, Y is already there so we can uh, now solve X uh, in the same way that we did earlier uh, by the back substitution method and x3 equals to y3 by diagonal u3 and x2 equals to y2 minus u23 into x3 divided by diagonal u2 x1 equals to y1 minus u12 into x2 minus u13 into x3 divided by diagonal u1 and that will give you the solution x and x can be displayed type x that will give you the solution so that uh, is a small illustration for the use of Cholesky decompositions. I mean, this is sufficient to get uh, the idea about the vector and matrix concept in R. So in this module, we have learned, you know, how to get the matrix inverse, uh, inverse of a square matrix, as well as the G inverse uh, where for a singular matrix and the eigenvalue and eigenvector, you know, how it can be derived in R the application of eigenvalue and eigenvector in statistical computation, the singular value decomposition and its application in uh, statistical computation through R, the Cholesky decomposition and its application through the statistical software R. I mean this, I think uh, this module along with the previous module really will help you to get a complete idea about the use of linear algebra that is vector and matrix concept in statistical computation that really uh, you know make the computation very faster and easy.